How's it going guys? Welcome back for another round of clever tips for space engineers. Today we'll be going through the following topics, uh, working on the first ones for just a little bit and then spending more time on the last three. And with that, let's jump right in. The first thing we're looking at is real quick and it's just to make sure that everybody's aware. Um, if you go into the control panel of a block and it has bars like this that you can slide to change velocity or so, you can control click and input uh, absolute values for velocities to make them more precise. And I would recommend you do that. It's much easier to keep track and uh, make everything match up better. So control click in your slider bars, good idea. And then also if you want to make weapons um, if you want to fire them just by using your mouse click, then you go to G when you're in your control seat. You go to block weapons, and then you just drag the weapon that you want into the toolbar down here. So now if I select one and hold the mouse, I'll fire my Gatlings. Press two, it'll shoot the rockets. Really easy, but it's something I continuously see people uh, asking questions about. And then it will also work if you use large grid with small grid weapons. Uh, it'll be the exact same thing. So we'll jump into the control seat here. And I've got my Gatling guns on the toolbar on 7. Got them clicked. And you just hold the mouse. It still works just the same. Over here, if you don't recognize these blocks, then that's because they're not typically used in this way. Uh, but this is a half block slab, which makes this possible. And then these are interior lights, control panels, and sensors. And that's just what they look like on the back side. So we've also got a few more that are kind of like this, cameras and sound blocks but their models aren't long enough to go through a half block slab. And then we can see that this is the, these are like dark gray versions. And then you can color interior lights and sensors and it will show through. But if you color a control panel, it's still gonna be gray on the back. And then if you grind them down a little bit, this is what they look like. These are the three states for sensors. And then control panels have a slightly different look to them. But it can be a sweet way to add some detail. Usually with interior lights, you can also use them as a light on the other side. So just a couple examples of that. This one I made um, a while ago. These are the interior lights. And I'm also using them as a light on the inside. Just that nice little bit of extra. And then this one is pretty dang fresh. This is the ATAT -AT by Malacanth, and uh, I helped him work on it just a little bit. And the things I was able to add are these sensors down on the feet, just because that makes it closer to what the model looks like. And then for the doors here, we added those interior lights um, once again to make it look more like the model. and then it doubles on the inside as a light source, which is just very handy. This guy's uh, just hit the wor workshop right now, and I highly recommend you try it out. It's my favorite ATAT -AT ever made, and uh, I'll provide a link to it in the description. Right here is another tool for your tool belt. I noticed that pistons can fit through a sliding door without any collision. So if we open those up and retract the pistons, we've just got a couple of things that maybe you could stick on them that do fit through. So something as small as an interior turret on top of the piston can fit through the door easily, but most large blocks uh, will get stuck. This is the one that I found that, that works, or maybe like an interior pillar, but I don't see why you would do that. But what's really nice is that a rotor can also fit through and a hinge block can fit through. 
And so you can use large to small grid connections and then stick a, like a small grid grinder on top of that and that will work. Or on the rotor, um, same thing, just a little bit different look. This one I used some spotlights as kind of just a, a pop-out light thing. And then uh, just some other ideas I thought that maybe could be on there, some kind of landing gear or a cockpit that retracts into the ground or comes out of the ceiling. Uh, drills, welders, just like this, or maybe a little pop-up compact turret on top of here would be fun. So just something that you might, you know, plan around in your design to have some turrets coming out of the coming out of the sides. And we'll just go through the animation again if you have it. Reverse the pistons here. We'll just say the door's open. And then you've got your turret coming out of here. Now this last one um, looks like just a line of blocks, but it's small grid and it's a station. And basically what this is, is a key to unlocking a world of creativity with small grids. Uh, there was a time a couple of years ago in the game when you could paste any small grid into the ground. And for some reason they decided that that wasn't a good idea, but fortunately for me, uh, I had some worlds that still had small grids in the ground after they eliminated the ability, and so I was able to basically just make a line of blocks off of the thing that was in the ground, and then when I copied that line, um, I was able to paste it again, not that, I was able to paste it again in the ground so I knew it would continue to work. And so what I've figured out is that any small grid that I have that I copy onto this one that's already a station will then become a station itself. So just to use an example here, uh, we'll just grab this ship. So obviously it kind of sits here. Um, if I wanted it to go into the ground, it can't. But the second I paste it onto here, then it becomes a station. So now if I stick it, you can see the wings are in the ground. So now I don't even need this part of the block. I can just delete it, and now I have this guy who will be a station. As long as uh, when I, every time I paste it in, some part is in the ground, then it will stay a station. But if I paste it above ground, it'll revert back into uh, a ship that I can fly around and I won't be able to put it in the ground anymore. So in order to get this, I was trying to figure out a way, I guess a better way than making you guys just download something that I've published, but I couldn't. So uh, on the first page of my workshop right now, or I guess just the latest thing that I've published that uses this is this medieval village. Um, so if you download that, I mean, I don't care if you keep it or just do it for this purpose, but all you need to do is download the village, cut off one of these popsicle sticks, as I like to call them, and then you can delete the rest of it. And if you then blueprint this little block as your, I call it my small grid station, um, then that will be your key to making anything into a small grid station. And so I don't see why anybody would want to stick their ship in the ground unless they were making a crashing. But I do have uh, some examples over here of basically things that I've done uh, using this technique. A lot of them are kind of just terrain props, you know, walls, fences, using different kinds of ground down blocks. These are solar panels and text panels here but just the the whole like world of possibilities that it opens up for maybe like a pvp style map um, you know you're shooting through these little gaps in the in the walls there tank traps i found that if you 
put these corners in like a spiral kind of uh, kind of line. Uh, it ends up looking like a nice barbed wire. Uh, also rope, which we'll see later on. And then just using, you know, colors and shapes, now we can get into kind of a wooden theme over here. A little spiky pit. And then the, uh, the new concrete texture is really sweet. We just got a couple of kind of dragon's teeth patterns over here and then various barriers and emplacements. So then moving further, uh, a couple more built up ideas. You've got like a pillbox with a turret that's on basically on the ceiling so it can still shoot out of this gap here. And then from the last video, um, this machine gun emplacement. Towers are fun too. Uh, even something as simple as this, just a little sentry tower. You can see as you climb up into it, then you've just got a nice uh, kind of overview of the space around. And then this one would be a more kind of heavily built up guard tower with some spotlights on it and its own little turret in the middle. This one's made out of heavy armor, uh, just a nice look to it. And then you can get a little more fun, um, start making trees, plants, a little campfire set up. And actually shooting or just damaging blocks can kind of give them a little bit more of an organic look to them. So I, I liked it enough to, to keep it there, a little tent. Moving on a little bit more, uh, I'll share a technique I have for embedding the blueprints inside of the voxel in kind of a, a reliable and repeatable way. So we've got like a trench right here, and I put this guy together, which is just a bunch of drills, um, a bunch of gyros on override so that it keeps its orientation. And then I made a little bit of a wedge shape to also try and keep it straight. So this just turns on the drills for a couple of seconds via the timers and then we'll turn them off to make a hole that is the correct shape for this trench. And then one thing I forgot to mention, uh, since they were already lined up, when you do this, you want to have a block placed down so that you can align your trench digger and your trench both to it. Um, that'll make it much easier to place it in the correct orientation for this hole. So I can grab my trench here and it fits nicely. So now it's even more believable. Uh, it's fun to have the voxel kind of cutting through and just makes it look like it's that much more embedded. You can make little slopes so that your engineer can now stand basically at the edge of the trench and look over. And so just expanding on that idea again. This one is like a little personnel bunker. Uh, made it a much shallower hole because it didn't need to be deep. And then once again, uh, having the voxel on there just makes it even better. And then this one, um, instead of using drills, I literally, I'm just using the blast of warheads to make my hole. And so that makes a nice little divot. that I can now place my structure into. Probably could have sunk it in a little bit more, but you get the idea. And last thing on here, um, just a couple of, I guess, larger builds that I've used making this way. 
Uh, you can go as far as building an entire tree and treehouse. Uh, there's already a full video on this if you want to see more of it. And then this one was, the idea was kind of like a, a base inside of a water tower. But the detail that you can make with small grids compared to large grids uh, is, is well worth the effort to, to put together something like this. That's all I've got for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got a little bit more inspiration and things to try out. And I will catch you on the next one.